And at that point, I think back wasn't really, he wasn't from CBS the way that he was before. Right. And he was, I mean, he has the name Shifty for a reason because he was known to do, you know, Shifty things. That's, you know, that's his thing. <laughs> um, and he had joined, like, what was funny is, like, CBS crew was a Hollywood crew. And I myself and Seth were from the West Side. And when I joined CBS, I also joined um, a gang called Scandals, which that gang and a couple other gangs that were in the same neighborhood all had beef with a West Side crew called West Side Crazies. And then through, through time, Seth kind of drifted away from CBS and he was hanging out with a lot of his uh, his Doobie Brothers. That's what was their little crew that gotcha. they had. And um, somehow he joined up with the West Side Crazies. And that's why you have Crazy Town. Because he became a West Side Crazy. And he became Shifty from West Side Crazies. And that's like the backstory on how you get Crazy Town. Wow. Killer, killer, podcast KillerKellerOfficial.com Street Culture TV Instagram UK Frontline Beatbox Creative KillerKeller And we're here to talk about world music and street culture KillerKeller Podcast Yes, people, Killer Keller, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, choose to be, could be, you don't want to be anywhere else, 500 plus podcasts in the bank, uh, ranging across the world from street culture, why would you want to be anywhere else? How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. This week is a, a very significant week in uh, the world of street culture. Um, California has lost an angel, um, somebody that embodied street culture from his core. Um, his close friends and family will know him as Seth Brooks Binzer. Um, to the old school, they'll know him as Kid Kaya from back in the day. Um, for the graph crew, CBS, they'll know him as Back One. And to the world over, you'll know him as Shifty Shell Shock from the band Crazy Town. Um, hybriding rock and rap in that West Coast flavor. This man is the embodiment of the West Coast and uh, joining me for an upfront chat on his uh, early graph career um, is the uh, representative, the uh, CEO of CBS Crew. Anger inside the place, how are you my brother? What's up, what's up, how you doing? Everybody in the UK, much love from Los Angeles. I'm actually sitting at the LAX airport. Um, waiting for my mother-in-law to get off a plane from New York. So um, I'm happy to be here, and I'm not so happy that the circumstances that it's under. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always sad to lose a good friend and a crewmate. Um, I mean, me and Seth were back... Uh, we go all the way back to 80, 89, maybe 80, wow. 89, maybe even 88. Um, actually I probably knew him. Yeah. Right. When I was getting into CBS, um, I remember he had a crew. I think he had a bunch of different crews. I mean, he was a member of Doobie brothers DB, which was a lot of different characters that I, um, associated with and, and hung out with. Um, but I think for a little while he had a little crew called LAK, which was LA Kings. Um, wow. it probably was, it probably was pretty brief. Um, and then in the end of 1988, Skate recruited, uh, about seven or eight of us to get into CBS. And that was, um, that was kind of like a good kickoff point for CBS crew. Um, until that point, CBS, which was born at Hollywood High in 1984, had gone through a bunch of different 
members um, going back to the original four that started CBS, which was Hex, Demo, Theory, and Frost. Okay. Um, and then Skate kind of took over the crew, maybe 86, 87 ish, something like that. When wow. I joined CBS, it was only um, Skate, Crook, and Thief and Deuce, who were writing partners. Thief was Crook's brother. And those guys weren't like, they were CBS, but from like a distance. So That's CBS it. was like a very, very small crew before the eight guys joined up. Um, and then we kind of took it to the next level. Um, we we started adding a lot more, um, not myself, but Skate and our, I guess our our energy and our and our um, tenacity was what caught everybody up in a whirlwind and we started having so many people interested in getting into CBS. Mm, and crew, I, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for me, myself coming from a lot of, uh, a lot of trauma in my childhood. Um, I, I like to say that anger was anger was my sword and CBS was my shield. Um, because I, because I was, you know, I was, and I talk about this a lot, just because I was sexually abused and physically abused for, um, a a decent amount of years between the age of seven and, and maybe like maybe 13. Um, the sexual abuse was a one-time thing, um, that happened to me in my home state of Alaska. And then I was sent um, I grew up in a weird re- uh, a religion called Sikhism, and I was uh, sent down to New Mexico where they had a, uh, a commune, and I lived on that commune for a little while, lived in India for about four years, and then got kicked out of the school in India because I, I kind of was, I guess I just grew into myself, mm-hmm. and I had... Um, I had a, a lot of dudes or, and I had a, I had a headmaster that was giving me canings all the time. Oh, and I had gosh. other people kind of join in on that, um, on that train. And they, and so I had it, I had a lot of people hitting me up about, um, just hitting me, just people that were just abusing me. And I just, at some point I just started hitting back. You know, and then yeah. I um, you hit the ceiling, you hit the ceiling and it was gang time. Correct. Correct. And then it was gang time, you know, like I, I literally got to L.A. after, you know, learning how to skate in, in India. I got to L.A. and I was like front and center in the middle of like what I was seeing in the magazines all the time. I was going to Venice and watching, you know, the likes of, uh, all, you know, Christian Asoy and mm-hmm. um, Aaron Fingers Murray and uh, uh, Tim Jackson. Those were all like really dope ass skaters that were like just killing it down in Venice. Um, wow. And I, but I, I started to get into graffiti also because of my friend Axis. Um, he's the one that was already into graffiti and then we were skating together and then we just, uh, I think there's a big uh, correlation between skateboarding and, and graffiti. Uh, I think a lot of people, you know, either they kept on skating and did graffiti or completely stopped skating and started doing graffiti. And that's what I did. I I was a big guy. It hurt when I fell, (laughs) you know, and I didn't. I didn't gotcha. like I was like, ah, you know, like I started just tagging a lot, doing graffiti, and that's when I met back. We used to go um Westwood was an area that a lot of the um teenagers would all go to and congregate in. Um it's mostly now it's kind of a little more of a subdued area. It's strictly for like UCLA students, but back then there was like an arcade there. So people would always go and meet at the arcade. And then we would like make our rounds around Westwood and 
Um, Seth was one of the guys, the younger kid, because he was 49. I'm about to be 52 in a couple months. Damn, you look good for 52, bro. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Yo. um, yeah, uh, lots of... Um, Lots of taking care of myself, you know, mm-hmm. trying to uh, maybe good genes. I have some Native American um, bloodline inside of me and then some Scandinavian bloodline. Uh, and you so, got the fresh blood. Yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, other than losing my hair when I was younger, which uh, no hair, no care. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a great personality and I, I make up for uh, what I lost on the top. I make sure that I make up for it in my linguistics, you know? Yeah. And, and geograph, you know? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, uh, the dirty stop outs are graffiti writers, the, the, these, these feral characters. And I can imagine for its time on entry, a few meeting back, Seth, um, and, and this really primal, youthful wisdom of the of of being into graffiti and meeting up with somebody that has a, 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 a kin, he's like a kindred spirit in a way. Um, what was yes. it like meeting uh, and hanging out with back back in the day? Um, it was interesting because I'm you know I coming from Alaska, I lived a pretty meager life uh, in the sense that my mom didn't have a lot of money. She was separated from my dad and like, you know, just living in India. Like I always felt like other kids had, like they were getting more money sent to them. And I was always like mooching off of people's food and stuff like that. So I, I didn't feel like I was, um, I definitely wasn't well to do. And then I met, when I got to LA and I, and I lived like Beverly Hills adjacent, I started meeting a lot of kids that were, um, that had more money and they had pools in their backyards and they were, you know, they were just like their parents were like a, an actor or a producer or something like that. So like, I remember early on, like when I met back, I believe he had a house that was right in Westwood. And I can't remember if it was his mom. He was living with his mom or his dad, but I remember that it was a uh, uh, um, what's that chick's name? Uh, Mila. Um, her name was Mila Jehovah Jehovahvich. Okay. She was like an. She was like a you know, yeah. And so he was he was kind of dating her, and. Um, I remember like going and I was like swimming in a swimming pool. And I remember him having sex with her, like on one side of the pool. And then my buddy Trin was with his girlfriend at the time and they were having sex over there. And I was like, Whoa, this is a weird fucking thing to be, you know, setting uh, like a weird setting, you know yeah. what I mean? But that was, it was very typical at those times to be hanging out in a, in a house that was, way bigger than I ever, you know, my, my mom had a little two bedroom apartment. So like to go to somebody's house and they had a pool and they had like, like just mad shit in the fridge. And I was, I had grown up a vegetarian. So I was just starting to like come out of um, not being a vegetarian and started like, you know, smoking weed. So I'd get stoned yeah, yeah, and yeah. I would like, like, like these, like it was like, unlimited you know pantry action and and um and their refrigerators were fucking stocked up and it was just it was different you know what i mean like total blessings like, right <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was a lot different for me being mm. being that i came from where i was and then i was set in this in this uh environment where people were a little bit more well to do mm. that was very interesting to me and um Seth was he was a he was a ball of energy man like there was a a bunch of younger kids there was this kid bust um who was who's still from CBS but back then he was like he had gotten in the crew a little bit before me and then um and he uh 
him and a bunch uh, and a few of the other guys from CBS, like kind of like, you know, we, we, we were, I think skate at that time was always recruiting and trying to grow the crew. Right. Cause at that time, like I said, CBS wasn't the biggest crew, but we, we soon, um, there was other crews that were really bigger than us that you would like look up to, to be in, in that. Those are the crews that you might want to be in. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them was w- WCA. If you were from the West side, it was, d- it was WCA, KSN, uh, BC, and um, maybe like one or two other crews, but there wasn't a whole, a whole plethora of different crews as there is now, right? Like if right. you look at the landscape of Los Angeles, it's um, way different. You know, now. yeah, way different now. KSN is not a real legitimate contender. WCA mm. has um, has membership, but not as they they're not as pungent as they were back in the eighties and early nineties. Mm-hmm. I think CBS, CBS crew, we've been able to. From that point, from 88, we've constantly been uh, a, a main uh, um, a mainstead in the Los Angeles graffiti scene. You really have, and obviously, man. thank you. Thank you. Um, and we've spread our wings, you know, throughout, obviously, Los Angeles, America. And now we're kind of working on opening up different um different chapters you know we opened up a a chapter about a year and a half ago in australia that's going really well right now my boy jc uh runs runs that chapter out there and then um we just opened up another uh chapter in the philippines i actually just put in um i don't know if you're familiar with with ecto of course um yeah, he's he's one of the new guys that we just put down in the UK. Big up, Ecto. Um, yeah, man, that's my guy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we. He's been, been on the podcast. You know, he's been through. Oh, the podcast. he has. I figured. I was thinking of him as I was coming on here. I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure Ecto is going to hear this. That's awesome. So yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Big up, Ecto. Yes, I love that guy already. He's such a good. Uh, um, he's, he's a great graffiti artist. Crazy. And he has a really good um, personality and especially for some of the um, some of the things he goes through, you know what I mean? Health wise and stuff like that. I feel like um, I'm just really stoked to have him in the crew. And then, you know, from there, who knows what happens, how we can recruit and get, you know, CBS crew to be um, in the, in more of a mainstead in the, in the UK. Um, sure landscape right we'll talk um yeah and i think i think cbs we i think we try one of the things we've been able to do very well and this was from um in the 90s when it started is we've always been like in the music scene you know Mm. we've always had um a lot of a lot of uh, rappers, DJs, um, people that were um, in punk bands or rock bands or metal bands. So I'm, I don't, I mean, I'm pretty sure like we have more albums than probably any other graffiti crew out there. You yeah. know, like I would be surprised to hear if there's another crew that has as many uh, has done as well in the graffiti um space and also in t- in the music space also yeah almost um, like uh, as so, a as a as an introductory creative hub you, you yes. know it 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 extends its arms to different genres of 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 the arts right correct correct so um seth i mean that kid was down to do anything i mean he was like I mean, there's this little clip in the Can't Be Stop documentary where he talks about um, get, getting in, finding a way to get out to onto the top of the Hard Rock Cafe where there was a <laughs> Cadillac, old Cadillac sitting there and he wanted to bomb that Cadillac. Like he was very specific 
to get space spots that nobody else really wanted to get. And Daredevil tagging hadn't really taken off yet. Um, I think uh, maybe within a couple years, you had Fox 11 News covering and calling um, and talking about Daredevil tagging and how people would go out of their way to like hit, you know, billboards or rooftops and like i mean you see the links that people are going to now with like rappelling down the sides of buildings which is like the new craze um but you know was started a long time ago it just didn't get it didn't get super popular until the last couple years where Mm. people are rappelling and doing graffiti when they're fucking in harnesses you know (laughs) literally hanging on the side of a building or doing whole skyscrapers, doing, you know what I mean? That's correct. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's, you know, it's really the whole graffiti scene. Mm. It's very much like the skating scene where you have your um, your ups and downs. Mm. And graffiti, graffiti isn't, you know, like sometimes there would be times in graffiti where like there was nothing for anybody you know what I mean? Other yeah. than just to go out and there was no money involved. There was no status involved. So you, you know, to be in graffiti between like, let's say like 95 to like, to at least in LA. And I think this even would be indicative for the rest of the United States. Mm. Uh, uh, 2008 was a hot year for people to get back into graffiti. Mm-hmm. Right. Because yeah. Um, there was some museum shows that were going on and Mm. people started to see that graffiti, that there might be more to graffiti than what they thought. For sure. And so you had a lot of people, I'm not going to say any names, but there was a good amount of crews and, um, people, individual writers that had kind of written off graffiti you know Mm kind of like when you see those skate documentaries and people didn't really skate anymore because it was for the younger crowd Mm -hmm. and if you were skate like you know i'd have people be like what are you like why are you still doing graffiti you're still tagging like a buddy of mine i was in indiana and i was like you know came out of the bathroom at the bar and i was like man i fucking i got you up on the fucking mirror and he's like what he's like (laughs) it was one of the homies like that got in the crew my boy bias Right. I was out there for work, and he I, he was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "You scribed on the mirror." He's like, "How old are you?" And I'm like, "What the fuck do you mean?" Like, "Fuck yeah, I gotta fucking scribe up." Like that shit's gonna be up there forever. Yeah, you know, fucking right? Yeah. But he he had he had stopped doing graffiti in the early '90s, and for me, you know, when Skate passed away in '93, that was like a pivotal year for myself to step up and um, really take it and take take the crew to the next level and make um make some of the choices based off of what skate was trying to do that's what i tried to do i tried to keep the crew moving forward because as you know people get it you know like they lose interest in the art form Mm. they get more involved in going to strip clubs yeah doing you know hanging out getting drunk doing coke you know, doing other fucking drugs, shit like that. And I, I had already, yeah, I had already like had my experience with drugs. I had fucked around with some psychedelics. I had already been arrested a bunch of times. I, at that point after, uh, by the time skate passed away in 93, I think I had, um, two assaults on police officers, uh, separate, separate incidents. Wow. And then I had one, uh, another assault and I had vandal- vandalism charges and I had, um, you know, a bunch of different lower charges than my assault charges. So I was, I was to, trying to... Mean, all misdemeanors? No, felonies. Felonies, okay. Yeah, felonies. I, uh, oh. I got one up in the Beverly Center. I beat up a, uh, a couple cops with a dog chain. Um wow. And then before that, I, in the Beverly Center, which is a mall out here. Yeah, I know the Beverly um, Center. <laughs> yeah. And um, I had some. I'm picturing the, it now, the, Anger. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
one of the um one of them's happened on the eighth floor, which is the uh the where the food court food is. is yeah. That was my first that was my first assault and some worker was, you know, got lippy with all of us because we were hanging out in the food court and we he was trying to do his job and I just made it a little more difficult. I ended up throwing a chair at him. I ended up, you know, getting arrested for that. Um, and then my next assault was because I was hanging out with all my homies and we got into a fight with some cops that were off duty and they started, you know, they kind of started the fight, but then we started and we, we raised the level when I started hitting them with a chain and then they pulled out their guns and said, you know, Culver city police. And I was like, (laughs) Oh fuck, you know, damn it. And, um, (laughs) And then in 92, I ended up taking a bunch of hallucinogenic, uh, a bunch of acid, took five, five hits of acid. And I ended up, um, I ended up getting shot by a cop at Venice, uh, not at Venice Beach, at Sunset Beach. Um, and that was like, um, that was a pivotal time in my life. And I had to make a lot of, uh, different choices. Otherwise I was going to end up just getting locked up and letting, um what what was the use of my sword and shield going to be if i was constantly in jail i wasn't going to be mm. any use to anybody and so i um I, I i chilled out on a lot of things but i kept graffiti uh dear to my heart and i and i you know i i, I got to be honest like i wasn't I, i'm and still not the best graffiti artist you know like I, my graffiti's good it's status quo. You know what I mean? I can hold myself on a wall, but there's a lot of dudes in my crew that are just, you know, top notch guys that fucking can rock constantly. Um, and they, and they push the bar in graffiti, but like, that wasn't ever going to be me. You I know, know, like, I I know was, bro. Like, I, I'm sorry to cut you. Cause it, you know, I, I must respond to that. Um, yes. Uh, first of all, I disagree. <laughs> but second of all, I think, you know, graffiti crews should behave like a soccer team or a, a football team. Right. Where you know your position. Do, do you know what I mean? And and yes. you know your position is the st- strongest place you, you can be. Um, right. Do you know what I mean? So, and, and ultimately, what you think of your craft is one thing. But if you know in your heart that you're holding it up against greatness, you're only gonna you're only gonna escalate up, right? Correct. So I, yeah, I mean, I, I I practiced a lot, you know. Like I won after that second assault on a um, in the Beverly Center. I I went to jail, went to juvenile hall, ended up in a uh, in a rehab, and I just you know, it took like three months to really like hone my tags better, get my throw ups better, practice my letters. And I got out and, um, luckily skate was, um, happy with all the progress that I had made. But mm-hmm. I, I, I would say that I'm more known for my, um, my, my kick and ass abilities, you know, like, uh, mm-hmm. because I had already, um, I had already had those, you know, assaults on my record, you know, the like that kind of created uh, some type of lore, and I had like an aggressive name, you know, like my mm. name's Anger, so I'm I'm really not gonna I'm not gonna like shower you with daisies, you know, I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna shower you with punches, but that's a that's a old, you know, a lot of people don't when they meet me these days, like I'll tell people like what my tag name is, and they're like you seem pretty happy though. Like you're not angry, are you? And I was like, no, nah, I'm not angry anymore. You know what I mean? I've, I've, I've gone through a lot of therapy to get myself into a better mindset, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, I think I, um, I think I, I know that if you're going to have durability, you're going to do it. Like you, you can't like, you can't bust your nut all at once in this mm. scene, you know, like if you're going to be here for a long time, you got to think longevity. You got to think like, this is a marathon. This is a long distance race. And I was that's always right. a long good. I was good at long distance running. Like that's one thing. Like I wasn't always the fastest guy, but I could last for a long time. 
Yeah. You know, man. and so I think I think that's what I've put in front of me as my as my adage. I've I've made sure that I um you know, I've made sure that I got better and could hold my own and with with anybody that I was going to be painting with. Mm-hmm. And then I I I'm, I guess a lot of people know me for just you know, keeping the crew um running in in some type of a good direction trying That's to right. make sure that that members that are in are doing what they're supposed to be doing that if there's anybody that's um that's that's not pushing like a graffiti agenda then you know I end up getting you know we 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 do work crew and it goes all the way back to skate that he was he was really um he was really okay with giving anybody a chance because he was the guy that got a chance to be in the crew and he was never the, the, the best graffiti artist either, mm-hmm. but he was always about giving everybody a chance to be part of something they wanted to be part of. And I believe that that's something that I keep in the crew and I keep that going. Like I'm going to, I'm going to give somebody a chance to be in the crew, even if their graffiti is not the best, mm-hmm. but we we have a lot of people that are really good at graffiti and they have top notch shit and mm-hmm. those guys attract other top notch guys and sometimes like a guy's not that great but he's like I like you I like you like like I have a saying stay aggressive and people are mm-hmm. like man that's fucking dope and like people I guess are you know somewhat attracted to somebody that comes from a dark place and is able to yeah. Um, you know, come out of um, uh, all the troubles and 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 the um, and the mind fuck that goes on being in this world. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, I think that's one of the things. You know, not to just talk about myself. I know we're here to talk about Shifty, but that's something that Back was always um, that he got kind of known for. You know, like mm. uh, you know, I remember when my kids were kind of young and I was just getting married and he would be on those, uh, those rehab shows. And, you know, he always, he always was having difficulty with substances, you know? And I mean, we still don't know how he passed away, but most people, like when I get text or people talk about it, they're like, you know, like, Mm. it's kind of like, well, we knew this was going to happen at some point because that fool was always fucking around, you know? And like, you can't fuck around forever in your life and you can't have drugs be what fuels you. You have to figure out a way to get into sobriety, which he did. Yeah. And you have to find a way to be inspiring, which he did. You know, and he was always really good at recreating himself. It, like you just, you know, when you introduced him, you introduced him under like five different AKAs. Yes. You know, yeah, this is loads and of so, AKAs, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, and I think that's really good for a lot of people to do. You know, mm. if you a lot of times I've done that. Like I've been like, really? Like, am I really a fucking asshole? You know, like, do I really live up to my name that good that I'm so angry that I push people away? And like, you know, there was times where in my relationship with my wife that I would feel like I I didn't want to bring home my anger. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like it was a good thing for the streets, but it wasn't going to be it wasn't going to be good for um it wasn't going to be good and conducive for raising kids. It wasn't going to be good and conducive for, you know, having a a long-term relationship with my wife. And so there was times where I would create different AKAs. I mean, one of my AKAs is AKA, like also known as, like I actually (laughs) write that. uh, And and I did that because I was having two kids and I had two kids and I was, uh, I was writing the fungus um, for a little while. But I would do these pieces that were like, it would say the fungus lives, the fungus dies, the fungus among us, the fungus was here. So it was like a, almost like a writing a sentence. And I think really big, 
and I, I paint big. I like big. I like. I don't do small pieces, and so I found myself having to waste a lot of paint, be at the wall for a long time, and then when my second kid hit. I was like, you know what? I got to I got to choose another name, you know? Yeah, and you go be so I, I, I cho- yeah, so I chose AKA and I would slip into yards like early in the morning, do my shit, get out of there, get home by like 10 o'clock so I could relieve my wife. And then I was, you know, I got my fix out of the way and I was able to, you know, try to be the best dad I could or try to be the best husband that I could because you got to play a lot of roles in this world, right? Oh, yeah, and you just so, got me thinking there like, these yes. these two and obviously you yourself the, these dual personalities do you think you know being aka fungus anger you know what i mean kaya back one shifty yeah. like these names the geek it's that's almost like an identification crisis it's like enough to make right. you, do you know what i mean to make you go a bit nuts anyway <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, we all have multiple personalities, you know, and I think if you're in a um, yeah. in the society that we are in and the culture that we're around, you can you can always recreate yourself. You know, mm. I mean, look at what, what is his name? P. Diddy. Right. Like with all the trouble that he's been going through, like mm. didn't at one point he changed his name to from Puffy to, you know, Diddy to this to that, and then he tried to make love his new name, and that didn't wow. stick. And he's not, but he wasn't tricking anybody. Like everybody yeah. knows he's a scumbag, and everybody's realizing, like, oh, he's just like all these other, you know, Epstein's yeah. and fucking um, Jimmy Savile pieces of that. shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people get fucking money and and <laughs> status, and they're just gonna always try to take advantage of um, mm. a, a, of the flock that's underneath them. Mm. Right. So yeah, aliases. Um, aliases. Yeah. Uh, I know time is precious because, like you say, you're at the airport. Yes, sir. Um, do you have a classic graffiti story of yourself and back one back in the day? Oh. <laughs> that I'll sound. Tell this, I'll tell this. Yeah, I'll tell this story. Um, it's very interesting. So I was with my ex-girlfriend and we were, we were weed smokers and she, we used to get weed from this one guy, Aaron Jaffe, and he was getting weed from up North, which was a big deal back then. Cause we, you know, like LA didn't have all the bomb weed like it did, like it does now. Right. Mm-hmm. With it being legal and all that type of stuff. So most of the good weed was all known to come from up north. And Aaron used to go up north and grab a bunch of weed and bring it down. And um, but Aaron was like a kind of a nerdy dude, didn't have, you know, didn't have the uh, and didn't have the backup that he needed. So through my girlfriend and talking to Aaron, like we created a system where I could get weed off of him for a good price, start to sell weed you know, underneath him or with him. And then um, what happened was he calls me one day and he's like, yo, I just got jacked. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, some fools fucking called me to, you know, hook it up. And I went there and they all had masks on and they fucking jacked me. They had baseball bats and this and this and that. And he's like, He's like, but I know who it was. And I was like, what? You know who it was? He's like, yeah. It was like Scott Kahn and Seth Binzer. He's like, I know their fucking voices. He's like, there's the ones that fucking jacked me. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And at that point, I think back wasn't really, he wasn't from CBS the way that he was before. Right. And he was... I mean, he has the name Shifty for a reason because he was known to do, you know, Shifty things. That's, you know, that's his thing. (laughs) Um, And he had joined, like, what was funny is, like, CBS crew was a Hollywood crew. And I myself and Seth were from the West Side. And when I joined CBS, I also joined um, a gang called Scandals which that gang and a couple other gangs that were in the same neighborhood all had beef 
with a West Side crew called West Side Crazies. And wow. then through through time, Seth kind of drifted away from CBS and he was hanging out with a lot of his uh his doobie brothers. That's what was their little crew that gotcha. they had. And um somehow he joined up with the West Side Crazies, and that's why you have Crazy Town, because he became a West Side Crazy and he became shifty from West Side Crazies. And that's like the backstory on how you get Crazy Town. Wow. wow. I don't know if a lot of people, yeah, I don't know if a lot of people know that. No. I so anyways, I, it. I, I gathered up some of my homies. We, uh, my boy Courtney knew where they lived. He lived over near the West Side Pavilion. We went to one house, but he wasn't at that house. So we went to this other house and um, I had the homies stay outside and I knocked on the door and his little sister came and answered the door. And I was like, is Seth here? And he, she's like, yeah, he's upstairs. I was like, all right, cool. I walk upstairs and I walk into his room and he had a pretty big room because it was a pretty big house with a mm -hmm. pool. Right. <laughs> and, um, and I'm like, yo, what's up? I was like, you fucking jacked my homie. I was like, you got to up everything. And they were like shocked. They were like, what? I don't think they knew that I was connected with Aaron. Right. Wow. So then back fucking says something smart. You know what I mean? And I, I end up, you know, I don't know if I slapped him or I socked him. <laughs> and I just, I, I, I basically jacked them back for everything that they jacked Aaron for. Wow. I was like, yo, like, come out the pockets, you know what I mean? Like, you guys <laughs> need to, like, give me all the money, all the fucking weed, whatever you got going. At the same time, one of their homies was coming in the door from going on a beer run because they had just jacked somebody, so they were getting, you know, partying up. Celebrating, right? Except, so my boy Link <laughs> fucking jacked them for the beer. I wow. was jacking them for the fucking the weed and the money. <laughs> Aaron came in and he had a trash bag and he was throwing all the weed and the money into a trash bag. And then we took off and I let him know. I was like, yo, don't fuck around no more. Like, like I'm connected with this dude. And if you jack him, you're jacking me. Wow. And I'm like, man, we're sorry, anger. We didn't know. Da, 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 da. And then we, we got back to the house. We counted the weed, counted the, you know, took, you know, inventory of the money. Mm -hmm. They were a little bit short, so we, you know, I had to be like, hey, guy, you, you know, I had to call them and be like, hey, you gotta, you know, you gotta come up with a little bit more because you, you know, it does the math doesn't add up. Yeah. So that ended up happening, and um, it was one of those things that, like, years later, we laughed at. You know, mm -hmm. it was uh, it was interesting to see how like how times can change. You know what I mean? And your your lawyer, you're like, you know, at one point. And I don't think that I think in their heart of hearts, if they would have known that Aaron was connected with me, they then that would have never happened. Yeah. They know that we were we were about our business. And so um, I know that there's a lot of stories about Seth like that. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. Seth was he carried that same energy with him all the time. You know what I mean? Like wow. whether he was doing graffiti, whether he was doing music, whether he was, you know, you know, you know, who knows how many people he got, you know, got yeah. caught up in a position with. Yeah, right? yeah, right. <laughs> but that was, you know, like, I mean, I'm guilty of the same thing. I used to jack people for paint at the yard, you know, like mm -hmm. I did dick maneuvers when I was younger. Um, I, you know, I stopped doing that as I got older. I wasn't trying to, you know, I wasn't all about hijacking and, and stuff like that. I, uh. I mellowed out, you know, to a certain point. Yeah, street culture has its own code, doesn't it? Its own code of conduct. And back one, Shifty certainly embodied that, as do you, my brother. Oh, I think that's my uh, my mother-in-law. Hold on. Oh, I've lost him. He's out. He's out. Anger is out. Um, I'm going to sign off, man. Um, big shout out to anger thanks so much for joining us on the podcast um we'll catch you a second time we'll do a part two um and once again this is dedicated to uh, seth brooks binzer aka kid kaya back one shifty the shell shock 
crazy town. Rest in peace, my brother, and hold tight to all my CBS crew and all of, the, all of our friends out there, Rucker Iris Science, Evidence, Dilated Peoples. Rest in peace, DJ AM, UTI crew, Thus, Ray Downset, and all the crew out there. Rest in peace, Skate. Anger, thank you very much. Killer Keller podcast and dedicated to Mr. Crazy Town. Peace.